What is up ladies and gents, welcome back to yet another episode here as the nation of Austria where we're going to be absolutely killing it and of course in the previous episode the Protestant Reformation has begun. Now with that being said, uh, it does take some time because I actually dealt with the first center of Reformation so quickly, um, if I recall correctly, it does take some time for uh, the other centers to actually spawn basically. Because it's strange, um, you know, the way that the Reformation usually works is other nations who, you know, the second and third nation who are convert to Protestantism, with some exceptions, like if they neighbor the, the other center and so on, um, that's actually where the, the next center begins. However, if you do crush the centers of Reformation so quickly that there is essentially no Protestantism, that means that uh, there are some nations who do have the favorable or favorite religion of Protestant. And they, they, are, they can flip over. But I'm just saying that they, they actually have the least incentive to flip Protestant. Uh, due to the fact that there is essentially no Protestantism whatsoever because you cut it off immediately. Now, with that being said, around this time, there is a lot of uh, throughout Europe, you know, if you consider all the different nations, there is a lot of random events where your province will become a Protestant, for example, and reformed later. And uh, that means that if it does, you know, occur on a one province minor, they're also going to have incentive if their religious unity is negative 100%, you know, to switch religion. So it definitely does happen. I'm just saying here, not in the beginning of the uh, episode here. And speaking of which, I actually have had the Peasants' War disaster for the longest time. Um, so thankfully, I am actually gaining some manpower right now, which is pretty nice. Because uh, the Peasants' War disaster has not been progressing due to the fact that I don't have, I think it's a minimum of 25 or something like that. I'm not over 25 over extension, and I don't intend to be anytime soon as I uh, am actually uh, mostly chilling. I did, I think my next war is actually Venice, and I intend to just take those uh, provinces, provinces around Bosnia to uh, add them to the Empire, get that Imperial Authority. And I think uh, because the development was low enough, I, I decided that I could take them and not have the Peasants' War uh, continue progressing. But of course, my stability is also high enough that, uh, yeah, Peasants' War isn't really doing anything, but it, it has pr progressed to about 60% of the way. Oh, you can see it there. Uh, so the fact that I'm gaining back manpower for the first time in a long time uh, feels good. That's all that I'm trying to say. Uh, I also want to say, guys, that if you are at this stage, if you are able to uh, simulate things to this extent yourself, um, then congratulations, I would say, because you're definitely past, you know, most of the difficulties. And uh, this episode and next episode, we're going to be dealing with the Protestant Re Reformation, which is the only real uh, limiting factor remaining. But I think if you guys have watched my other video talking about Protestantism, then if you're in a similar situation to this, you should be more than capable of uh, handling that yourself. Now, I did uh, abjugate, if I said that correctly, people always uh, hate my pronunciation because I'm just straight up ignorant, uh, my ruler, and that's something that I recommend you guys do, even if your ear is not ideal or whatever, th thinking about stats. Uh, you know, who needs stats when you can just integrate the whole world freely via the HRE, right? Um, no, ideally your ear is good or whatever, but I do recommend cycling through your rulers if they do linger around which means i think they've uh, ruled the country for i think it's 20 years or they are out older than uh 60 then you can actually uh abjugate them and get that 10 imperial authority i did that earlier in this episode and i also uh, a few episodes ago we had a Habsburg on the castilian throne now I have already mentioned this information in an earlier episode, but uh, if Castile is rivaling France and you as Austria are rivaling France, if you actually royal marriage them and they do not have an heir themselves, then they have a mean time to happen to just have a Habsburg basically spawn as their heir. And uh, it's quite likely to actually happen. And uh, with that being said, this happened, I think, not last episode, but the episode before that. And I also broke my alliance with Castile. And uh, the reason is because I don't want to have a truce with him. 
so that if he ever has a weak claim from this point onwards, uh, and you have pretty good odds, by the way, guys, that as soon as that heir comes of age, uh, there is actually no, you know, child, just like uh, you guys experienced yourself. From my experience, it seems about 50-50, guys. If you're in Regency Council and you have a kid heir, and that heir grows up, uh, there's about 50-50 whether he has like a younger brother or whatever, or, he, or there is no heir. And at that point, I don't want to have that truce with Castile. Now, with that being said, I am making sure, guys, to max my relations with him. Uh, we do have that royal marriage, which, oh, at least I think we do. No, we actually don't, if I remember correctly. But he was friendly, and I was keeping my relations really high with Castile, so that uh, ideally he didn't rival me, but also I could grab that royal marriage uh, whenever I need to. Um, now, with that being said, guys, I, before we go to war with Venice, which I think is my next move, over some free clay as we're waiting around for the next center. Uh, I have been adding land, as you guys can see, like uh, in Sweden, uh, to the empire. And uh, there's much more of that land to come as we begin integrating these subjects of a decent size like Byzantium, let alone our unions, if we do get to that Hungary. You guys might find that um, because you usually integrate Hungary around 1450, around that time, it's around the year 1500 that you, you have the possibility to integrate them, or 1510, around that time. And uh, that might be th the case where you can add those provinces, which is a pretty significant amount, right? It's going to be around 25 or 30 provinces that can be added, which results in a lot of imperial authority. And that might be the moment where uh, that you've been waiting for. So the age of reformation has begun as uh, it has been long enough. If you guys quickly saw, though, when we took a glimpse of our religious map mode, there is no Protestants or Reformed nations. Uh, there are a few Protestant provinces, and uh, I've just begun declaring war on Venice as I got kind of a bit tired of or waiting around and not having anything productive to do. With that being said, I think that Bar does... Uh, Bar, which is, you know, the province owned by... Uh, by Provence in the beginning of the game, on the French side of the empire, uh, it does actually fl it is currently uh, Protestant, and the religious unity is really bad, and they do actually flip Protestant. However, the Second Reformation is not formed there, and uh, I think the reason is because it is right next to where the first center was formed. Uh, however, I do remember, if I recall correctly, going into war against them. As I was waiting around, I didn't like the fact that he was a heretic. So I actually fought a uh, sort of fourth war, if you will, against another center, which was not a center. It's just the fact that I wanted to convert him because I felt like I could and there was uh, nothing else going on at the time. So I definitely remember doing that. Uh, but I just want to say a, a few things, guys. Um, some people have been commenting about their games and how they're doing better than me and so on. And, uh, you know, that is what it is. Um, I would sort of uh, congratulate them, but they're not exactly um, very uh, humble, let's put it that way. Uh, but it just blows my mind, guys, because if I reiterate, the intention of this video is, first of all, to help other people. And uh, with that in mind, I've done a, a lot of things that I don't recommend, um, like the hardest war and longest war that I fought against Denmark uh, without any allies. Uh, because I wanted to see if I could brute force it, like ha just how difficult it is to actually achieve. Uh, but not only that, I went into this game uh, intentionally not trying to get unreasonable RNG, like for example the Burgan Inheritance. It was actually my intention to not get good RNG, if that makes sense. If I had gotten the Union over Hungary, for example, for free, I would have scrapped my recordings and do it again uh, so like i don't know if i need to reiterate that or whatever but you know with that being said uh those of you who are just so much better than me uh congratulations and uh, i consider trying to have a maybe start your own channel or something like that but uh, enough salt from budget monk i'm just trying to fill space here uh so far guys this entire series has been although it has been naturally sped up it has been one um, solid block of recording back to back 
And at some point, I am going to break that because this is actually not intended to be a full-blown, um, you know, let's play, even though it is uh, sort of sped up in a time-lapse format. Uh, it actually is, the intention is to help people. And I know it's nice to see that some people are actually uh, trying to sort of play through themselves. And I saw some person commenting that he's going to wait to see how I deal with the center of reformation. Oh, I was mistaken. Bar is actually the second of uh, second center of reformation. So I, I had actually, uh, that was wrong. Uh, my memory does not serve me right. I've been fighting, playing, excuse me, too many Austrian games back to back. And they're all kind of blending together. But with that being said, cool. The second center spawned in bar and uh, another no CB war going straight in against him, apparently. And I guess we're fighting, uh, I think he's in some kind of trade league. As you guys could see, he had a tremendously large quantity of, uh, a tremendously large quantities of, uh, I don't know why I can't speak today, um, allies. However, thankfully, many of them were not backing him up. So I think he must, considering he's a one promise miner, actually be inside a trade league. But only a few of them are actually backing him up. And uh, as we are the mighty Austria, and we are in, for the first time in a long time, we're in pretty good shape in terms of manpower, but also financially, uh, we're definitely reaching the golden era, guys, where you can just jam the papal influence from the Pope into inflation reduction and so on and there's really no downside to being the beautiful Austria and we're certainly strong enough to handle Barr and his pitiful coalition whoever that consists of I think the leader of the trade war like uh, Genoa or um, Lubeck was actually involved in another war because they don't seem to uh, actually be backing him up there was actually peace inside the empire, I uh, noticed from reviewing my own footage uh, prior to me declaring this war. And I think I was aware of that at the time. Uh, but with that being said, that bonus of 0.1 Imperial Authority per month is huge, especially in the early game. If you guys can be lucky and get that, um, then that's certainly a good thing. But right now... I'm more concerned about actually uh, eliminating Protestantism than I am on the bonus imperial authority because it's going to work out better in the long run. Now we can see that the third center has spawned in Dresden. So turns out I was actually lucky in that regard, guys, that they were all inside Germany and they were all inside capitals. Uh, naturally, I've spoken about this before. If it was not inside a capital, the good news is is that that province at this stage of the game, a non-capital inside the empire, is uh, probably fairly low development, meaning taking it, uh, because almost everybody is Catholic, uh, taking it, the low development province, is not going to result in very much aggressive expansion, but with the religious ideas, which actually counterbalance the negative 5 to local missionary strength in that province, uh, it actually means that considering it's low development and you do have the basic bonus from tech, for example, um, the decision that you can take and a missionary advisor I recommend having. Uh, so my point is that you can definitely convert that province and that is exactly what you're going to want to do if it is not a capital province is to take it yourself. Now I do actually remember guys, you can see here that Lorraine is a Protestant and he was uh, he ultimately succumbed to owning too many protestant provinces he was actually a, a catholic nation who annexed luxembourg if you guys remember uh, which was a protestant nation and i didn't grab that unlawful territory because he was catholic but due to the fact that bar uh, spawned another center lorraine has actually become protestant and i believe next episode i actually go in against lorraine as well for the heck of it because let's get rid of all those protestant fools uh, it's definitely a productive thing to do if you don't have anything else to do at the time. I think actually at the end of this episode I do declare war. But with that being said guys, that has been two centers of reformation dealt with. We've got one more remaining. And this uh, block of footage is actually really long so I'm going to cut it into two episodes. It's pretty self-explanatory what's happening. But nonetheless, I hope you guys appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. 
and I will see you in the next episode where we end the existence, we eradicate Protestantism from the face of the earth.